Warning, hull breach imminent. I came across this game for Windows called Artemis uh, Space, what is it, Artemis Bridge Simulator or something, which is a similar idea, um, but it runs on Windows. And I don't have a Windows system, I don't, I'm not going to go get one just for this game, right? And I just thought the idea of the game was neat, and I thought, well, that would uh, be an interesting project. So I started working on it. Why Linux? Windows has enough games, right? <laughs> Jeremy over here has got a bunch of these USB keys and he's made put a, a bootable Linux distribution. And we also have Space Nerds in Space code on this. But last time we did this was maybe a month ago. So the code that he has on there is old. So we had to update all the code by doing git pull, which pulls it down from GitHub. And we had to build it. And in the meantime, in the last month, there's a bunch of new dependencies on K, G, L, E, X, T, A, bunch of stuff. So Space Nerds in Space is quite obviously inspired by the Star Trek TV show. I mean, uh, that's, that's pretty obvious. It's a multiplayer networked spaceship simulator. But unlike most other games of that sort, this game is designed to be played by several people who are all in the same room, each with their own computer, and each computer sort of acts as one of the stations on the simulated starship. So, for example, you have a captain who's kind of directing the action, you have somebody who's steering the ship, you'll have somebody who's firing the weapons, you'll have somebody who is monitoring the nearby skies on the science station, you'll have somebody on communications who's monitoring radio transmissions of other ships in the, in the galaxy. And, in, in at least in Space Nerds in Space, I also have a uh, kind of game master station where somebody can manipulate the universe and inject various things into the gameplays to entertain the other players more. It's kind of a, a dungeon master. Brahms uh, Tragic Overture, is that the one you're thinking of? I don't know, that's not actually part of the game, but I, it seems to fit and it may end up being part of the game. I was looking for something that had that kind of cinematic um, orchestral thing, but you know, you listen to most symphonies or, or that sort of thing and they're just a little bit too too much in the front and not just kind of laying back a little bit. And this one had a, was laying back a little bit, had a, a lot of strings and, and horns, but like French horns, not really harsh trumpets. So I liked it. And I got that one off, uh, I think it's MuseOpen, MuseOpen.org. I guess one thing I would like to say is if somebody goes out there and finds it because of this video, <laughs> at this point it's only half done or so, if half done. So um, if you're used to big production AAA type games, it's not going to measure up. <laughs> to some extent it's that way because that's what I'm able to do. But you can take those limitations and turn them to an advantage and, and make it sort of that way on purpose and then you know, some good comes of it. If you're familiar with uh, Defender or Stargate, I have another game that's similar to that and it uses only line drawing primitives, which was called Word War VI. It was supposedly between a battle between VI and Emacs, but let's not get into that. Forget the instructions, I'm going in. Dude, I'm almost dead. I'm doing a gas. pretty decent job of... Oh, fuel, that's what I needed. Yeah, this is cool. dangerous, okay. And the ground is painful. Because, ground hurts you. yeah, when I go low, man, I got these rockets trying to blast my ass. This time. Okay. Oh, my God. I still haven't gotten any fuel. Oh, my dear. I got blasted in oblivion. Good Lord, Steven, you're twisted. Your mind is sick. How did you... <laughs> I can't get past level one. Okay, but for posterity, my name's coming in.
Can you, uh, can you at least do yeah. level one for me? I'll try. Last guy. lines it suddenly becomes very easy to scale your game to any resolution it becomes easy to port your game to any new uh, device or technology uh, word war vi got ported to ipad windows we actually wrote a, a laser projector version of it uh, jeremy a friend of mine that hangs around txrx uh, it's now the secret your password's hacker <laughs> <laughs> He built this little homemade RGB laser projector for like 400 bucks somehow. And we hacked Word War VI apart and replaced all the line drawing functions with functions to control the laser projector. And we got the thing to work. I mean, we did have to cut a lot out because the laser projector is really slow, but um, that never would have been possible if the game had not been strictly lines. Like I said, there's the different stations on the bridge, but then, of course, you have to have the big screen, which is, you know, the front view out the front of the spaceship. And that's a different beast, because that, you can't get away with the kind of line drawing stuff as easily. Now, when I first started, my hope was that I would get someone else to do that part of it. And, of course, that didn't happen. So... For lack of anything else, I thought, well, let me give this a crack. And then, like, in the last week, I've started dinking around with OpenGL. So I expect that the graphics should improve. They're still never going to be to the level that AAA games, but they're getting better. Um, so that's good, I guess. <laughs> I program like old school programmers, so it comes out looking that way. <laughs> Right now, what happens in the game is you have this big universe of, of space, and they're sprinkled into the universe sort of randomly are space stations and a bunch of ships that are flying around. Okay, by all means, click on the details. Someone sit on the space bar. What warp? Warp factor. 2.6. Alright. Hey. Wait for it. Yeah, we could. Alright, I've brought us the hell round to face the unknown. Okay, engineering, do not eject. <laughs> Do not eject the warp core again. <laughs> Sensors, find us a space station. We're in about bingo fuel. Okay. Um, we really have confusing defenses. There we go. Okay. That is a warp. Okay, this is actually is a part of the game. This game, no. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is debugging and God stream. <laughs> this is insert. Right. I tried typing dock. Are we docked? Yeah. Oh, good. I guess that was impulse power. Was, oh, oh shit, we got a company. Bearing, uh, bearing uh, 20. It's got a name, right? Darkon type Dragon, Dragon Hawk. Uh oh, it's at Starship. Uh, uh, yeah, I see it. They get the weapon view up on me. Can you see his, his status as he gets damaged? Oh my god! Yeah, that, was awesome. that was like a hole in one right there. You fired that for me. <laughs> Yeah, I'm the I'm nav guy, this is a weird 
Got one coming in. What's his uh? uh, uh Thirty. Someone already plays Edson Bear on on Nav. I'm back on Nav. I think so. Really? All right, I'm taking his back to the station because he's complaining about hole breaches. Oh, yeah, we have hole breaches. That's what it said. Hole breach imminent. Okay, we'll just sure ask goodbye. Seriously said that? No. It, it has said that before. <laughs> Wait, it said kiss your ass goodbye? No, no, no. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, whoa, oh, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, stop. Wow, that's actually useful. <laughs> <laughs> Is that crushing sound us uh, yes. ramming the ship? <laughs> <laughs> By all means, let them give us gas now. Somehow a wormhole has approached this area, and we are being drawn in because I think wormholes are cool. Nice. <laughs> Holy shit. He <laughs> <laughs> <It> wasn't kidding. <laughs> uh, he was, see, there, that, that one of those ships is an Imperial probe droid. Someone turned to shield Okay, seriously. That, that, we put, that was a Starfleet ship. That was the Enterprise. <laughs> no, no, it was one of the ones with the single warp to sell, see? Hey, something just blew up on our heading. Fossa? Oh yeah, there's a battle going on up here. We're gonna work past him. I'm rotating the ship now. <laughs> oh wait, we go in the direction. No, yo, it, did, it didn't work. I engaged warp, I rotated the ship, and I'm now heading towards them from the other side. Oh, you warped wow. backwards. Yes. <laughs> that, it works. Yes. Warp to the other side of him, turn around before you warp, and they come out good. I don't have a, a, a master plan that I'm going to. It's kind of like ideas that seem cool that are easy enough to do, um, I put them in. Sometimes I try things and they don't really work out. When you fire the phasers, for example, there's a, they take a little bit to recharge. And the longer you wait for them to recharge, the more powerful they are. And the shorter you wait, if you fire them immediately after firing them, they're less powerful. Seems sensible. One thing that happened with me was um, I wanted a lot, uh, a lot less power on the laser because uh, if there's a lot of power, it, uh, see, it takes a bit more time to recharge. But either way, sort of the same amount of power is being delivered to the enemy, so to speak. So what ends up happening is people just hammer on the fire button. But I like just hammering it off. That way, the miss, when they miss, it doesn't cost them anything. Engineering, give the phaser some power so Steve can't cheat. Uh, another thing I did that didn't work out was I had this idea that um, whenever your ship gets hit by the enemy, all of the screens should, for a moment, show kind of snow, like the, like the systems were damaged or something. And so I had something like a quarter of a second of snow. And immediately, um, one, of the, one of the guys here who was big into games was like, oh, I can just do a denial of service by firing rapidly and then they can't see. <laughs> and that hadn't occurred to me, but it was perfectly accurate. <laughs> so there's always the potential for the players to figure out some little corner case that does something unintended, which is kind of interesting. So in 2010, when I first started this game, I, I didn't even know about TXRXF, so I, would, I, I can't say that I wouldn't have started it without this place, but I probably wouldn't have, when I stopped after two months that time and waited two years, I probably wouldn't have started up again if it weren't for this place. It's difficult to get, say, five or six people in a room, all running Linux, all ready to play this game, and uh, you know, TXRX Labs is probably one of the few places in the world where you can actually find that kind of a venue. I've been playing Space Nerds in Space for on and off pre alphas for a couple months now. It's really getting quite good. I think it'll be a good competitor for uh, Artemis Spaceship Bridge Simulator. Yeah, it's fun. Like, shouting orders back and forth, uh, being able to say, hey, guy right next to me, I need a lot more power on the laser. <laughs> I enjoyed it. It was. Uh, <laughs> I'm quite impressed that uh, uh, Steve, he, he did that all by himself. Like you know, I can't even imagine. 
it's GPL, it's open source, um, so anybody can take the source and do do what they like with it, provided that they also release their stuff. This is being developed. I can go into GitHub right now and poke around in it. Space Nerds in Space. Four words separated by dashes. Go and Google for Space Nerds in Space, you will find it. Shields up, bring the shields up. Phasers still engaged, Captain. <laughs>